Welcome to our Power Excel's discussion today on maximising trial efficiency and the updates on early phase regulatory timelines. My name is Amanda Lags and I'm based at the London Power Excel Clinical Unit for Early Phase Trials. And joining me today is Peter Dooland, Consultant of Scientific Affairs for the London Unit, and also my colleague Thin Thin, who is Head of Project Management for the Berlin Unit. Peter, can you give us an update on the MHRA? We hear they're back on track. How did they get back onto track? Yes, thank you. I, I guess in order to answer that, we need to understand to some extent how they got off the track, if that's the right term. They got rather overwhelmed with quite a lot of applications at one time, at the same time when several members of staff had left, and I think they, um, they were just overwhelmed. Um, they have reacted very quickly and and got things back on track and they, they've done that firstly by diverting some staff from their everyday job to their regulatory job um, and and also from taking on more additional staff they've also uh, which is interesting they've also um, revised the way that they will um, regulate uh, later phase studies, which should free up more staff to look at the early phase studies. So I, I, I have been to meetings where the CEO of the MHRA has spoken and uh, convinced us that uh, going forward, things are going to be back on track, back to statutory timelines, and will actually happen on time. To do this, also there was external help to the MHRA, the ABPI, Association of the British Pharmaceutical Industry, the CRO community and the Association of CROs all helped. And in fact, external people also helped them to do some of the reviews. I myself uh, got involved um, in reviewing some protocols uh, for them and um, the backlog was caught up with. Peter, how will the MHRA ensure that this is maintained? Well, I think that's the important thing, isn't it? We, we need to be convinced that it will be maintained, and I've been convinced. Um, and uh, certainly from the uh, 1st of September, we will be back to the statutory British timeline. So, um, there are legislative movements uh, afoot for other trials, which, as I say, will make it simpler to review later phase trials and non-contentious trials and free more people to look at the early phase trials. And here, in fact, are figures that are published by MHRA themselves showing that um, the first review is a 30-day um, target and in fact, they're achieving that now since September in 22 days. Um, and the um, feedback time has always been 14 days for the sponsor. So in two weeks, you have to get your answer back if there are questions. Um, and uh, then the second review is supposed to take 16 days. And in fact, it's been happening, as you can see here, in half of the time. So a 60-day approval window has actually been happening in about 44 days. Um, and the other bit of good news is substantial amendments. Now, I know and you know that in early phase and first demand studies, you never know quite what to expect. And you often have to write an amendment to um, continue with your study or your protocol in the appropriate manner. And amendments are being reviewed in 19 days rather than the statutory 35 days. So it's very uh, good news that we're back on track and we shall be watching very closely, as I'm sure you will, to see uh, that they continue to achieve this. Oh, thank you, Peter. That is very encouraging indeed. So, Thin Thin, can you tell us about the new regulations in Germany, the EU, CTR, and the impact it's had on early phase trials in Berlin? Sure. 
As you may have heard, we do have a new regulatory environment as of January 31st, um, 2023. This applies to all interventional phase one through four trials, which must be submitted according to the new regulations known as EUCTR. Uh, this did result in a single integrated EU submission for 30 EU countries covering both ethics and regulatory review. And all submissions and communications are electronic through the CTIS portal, which is used for EU CTR. One of the main consideration points, um, however, is the approval timelines, which have significantly increased from the previous um, regulatory process. And that went from 45 days to 106 days. Uh, another consideration was the rapid response time that is required to address any queries that are coming back from the regulatory authorities. And we have a maximum of 12 working, oh, sorry, calendar days um, in order to respond to any queries. And additionally, the um, required amount of work for submission package preparation. Um, the redaction of essential documents um, is also required for the submission process. The regulatory changes went into effect and um, unfortunately many clients are hesitant about running studies in the EU and we saw a direct correlation and drop in the number of study awards for the Berlin unit, unfortunately. So Cynthia, what communications have you had from the regulatory ethics and German government? We have uh, received additional um, communications from the regulatory bodies. Um, actually, in April, we received written confirmation from BFARM that for mononational, monocenter early phase trials, that the study would be evaluated within 26 days after a successful validation. And if the application had no deficiencies, a decision could be made within 30 days. And actually, uh, we received a very similar confirmation from the ethics committees to shorten the approval process um, as well. And that was communicated to us in August of 2023. So I wanted to uh, give you some visual reference here on this particular slide um, of five studies that we have submitted in early phase. The first two studies were submitted in the first half of the year. And as you can see, we have approval timelines of 107 days and 112 days. Um, however, I can confirm that since July of 2023, we have seen a significant decrease in the number of days that are required for approval process. With the most recent study that was submitted and approved um, taking only 60 days. I also do want to highlight that um, we do also have a first in human study that was approved by the authorities within 80 days, um, which is definitely a milestone that we do want to emphasize as well um, in respect to the fact that um, our majority of the studies that we're running are first in human trials here at the Berlin Early Phase Unit. Thank you, Sinthin. That's very encouraging too. So thank you for providing us with the updates on our early phase regulatory timelines. So just to say that PowerXL can maximize trials efficiency and support your organization every step of the way during the regulatory process. We are ready for business, easy to do business with, and we'll be delighted to welcome you to our units. Welcome everybody to our question and answer session. Uh, we do have a few questions from the audience. Um, so I'm gonna take those questions that are directed towards um, Germany and the new EU CTR situation that we have here. The first question that comes in is asking, um, can you tell us about the new regulation in Germany, EU CTR, and the impact that it has had on the early phase trials in Berlin? Yes, um, as of January 31st, 2023, all new interventional phase one to four trials must be submitted according to the new regulation, which is EU CTR. Um, this resulted in a single integrated EU submission for 30 EU countries covering both ethics and regulatory review. All submissions and communications are now electronic through the CTIS portal. And some of the main consideration points that we have to keep in mind is that the approval timelines went from 45 days to 106 days. Uh, we do have a rapid response 
time for requests for information from regulatory authorities as well as from ethics committees where we have a maximum of 12 calendar days to respond to any of those queries. And submission package preparation um, requires redaction of essential documents. Due to the regulatory changes, many clients <clears throat> were hesitant on running studies in the EU, and we definitely saw a direct correlation and drop in the number of study awards for the Berlin Early Phase Unit. We have another question um, that came in, which is what communications have you had from regulatory ethics and German government in 2023? Um, in April 2023, we received written confirmation from B Farm that for mononational, monocenter early phase trials, the study will be evaluated within 26 days after successful validation. If the application has no deficiencies, the decision can be made in 30 days. We received the same similar confirmation in August of 2023 from the Berlin Ethics Committee that they can also shorten the approval process as well. We have submitted at this time five applications within CTIS for early phase studies where first approvals were received in June of 2023. Uh, the next question that we received was, have you experienced any changes since these communications have been released? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, significant improvement with approval timelines for early phase single center trials um, has definitely been seen. Um, approval timelines uh, went from over 100 days uh, for approvals now to 60 days, um, with the most recent approval happening um, end of October 2023. Um, also, end of November, we did receive additional communication from the German Health Authority that the government is pursuing a new pharma strategy with significant reform ideas to be made into legislation in the first half of 2024. And the key impact for that um, in regards to clinical trials is that we are anticipating additional reductions in approval times for clinical trials, as well as centralized ethics committee review for the EU CTR process. Final question is, uh, what can clients expect? As far as what clients can expect, um, we do want to assure you that uh, Berlin um, project management team is ready to assist clients um, to prepare those part one and part two documents for EU CTR. We are working closely with the regulatory leads to ensure that submission packages are compiled and submitted properly um, and with first time quality to avoid any requests for information. And, um, Good news for the future, hopefully, um, is that um, we can, the PM team to, can take that burden off the clients um, in order to support clients with the EU CTR submission process, as well as anticipating additional reductions um, for the approval timelines for clinical trials, as well as centralized ethics committee review. That summarizes the questions for, for Germany. Uh, let me hand it over to Peter for any questions for UK. Thank you, uh, Fenton. Um, one of the questions we've received is a very broad, open-ended question, um, which reads, what is the UK government doing to make the UK an attractive country to conduct clinical trials? And the answer is that I think the message has got through to a government and to the government agency, which is the MHRA. And um, we have a commitment of an investment of over 120 million pounds in the process of clinical trials uh, regulatory um, process. So, they are undertaking to reduce all approval timelines to 60 days. They will deliver a mandatory national approach to contracting um, those projects. And they will also provide real-time data on commercial clinical trial activity in the UK. And indeed, they're already doing that. Um, and they will establish a common approach to getting patients into 
um, clinical research. And as you know, the UK has a nationalized health service and uh, through that health service, they're hoping to get patients into clinical research. Um, and they're going to uh, establish clinical trial accelerator networks to support um, various research delivery, both nationally and locally. So they've made all these commitments, but I think um, I, I just want to show you how that has evolved. They've made those commitments in such a way that they are liaising with importantly, the phase one community. And they are actually um, inviting us to meetings with the MHRA. And just before Christmas, on the 20th of December, um, our unit head and myself attended um, at the invitation of the MHRA, a meeting at their headquarters in London, where a four hour meeting uh, was held to discuss the specific issues around phase one research. This was very encouraging. And although we are being promised um, all reviews within 60 days, we as a group have put them under pressure um, to actually try and improve that to um, a much, uh, much shorter timeline for phase one. And then I can remember many years ago when you could put a first demand study into the MHRA and you would have an answer within two weeks. Now, they're not saying that they can achieve that because, of course, now we have a combined process. So you put your application for ethics and clinical trial approval in simultaneously. But we're hoping that they can reduce that 60 days, given some pressure and some time um, to possibly as little as half of that. So phase one may again um, be treated in a special way. And I think that is very encouraging. Um, the meeting was very proactive and I think uh, well, we are going, we have undertaken to have these meetings every three months. So I think that our community will be working with the MHRA to achieve much improved timelines. Um, it's interesting, we already have a liaison committee with the Health Research Authority, which controls ethics review in the UK. And um, that has always taken the phase one community on board and we have a a phase one advisory group meeting every um, six months with the health research authority which i am actually the chair of um, we are hoping that we're going to have a similar situation with mhra so that they can see things from our perspective as well as from the legal and regulatory perspective so i think that this is all good news. The other bit of the good news is that they are back on track and we know that the MHRA and they know indeed that they got behind with their approval times. Uh, they have put a lot of extra resource into this. They have caught up and in fact the last application that we made in London was approved within the 60-day time frame. So um, that too is encouraging. They are listening to what both you as clients and we as the conductors of the clinical research are saying to them. The other question that I've had, um, which is an interesting one, what as a final summary would be your good news message? And our good news message is several fold. One, it is good to know that the MHRA are back, to, back on track. Two, it's good to know that they are listening to us and they have increased the resource um, for reviewing clinical trials. Um, it's good to know that they are considering phase one in a slightly separate way um, because of the importance of first demand studies and the initial testing of new drugs. They are certainly more open to including 
patients in those studies and they are linking up with the National Institute of Health Research to help provide those patients. So from the UK point of view, um, it's um, good news and the message is that we're A, we're back on track, B, we can make these submissions for you as can my colleague Thin Thin's team do in Germany. Um, and we can help you negotiate your way through the regulatory process. So all in all, the UK uh, really was the pioneer of phase one trials. I actually started in phase one trials in their infancy about 45 years ago. And we have now reached the point where I think Europe and the UK are leaders in this field are back on track and hope that you'll come along and uh, discuss your projects with us. Thank you.